Marco suspects that some deaths this week are going to be connected to the ongoing heat waves. Marco told our partners at the Enquirer that they are currently in the middle of 19 autopsies, saying, quote, some of those are probably going to be related to heat. However, further tests will need to be done to confirm that. If you need a place to escape that heat, remember that we have a long list of cooling centers all across the tri-state. That list covers multiple counties. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. It's kind of amazing. You can find the list on our website anytime you'd like, fox19.com or on a free mobile news app. And scan the QR code so you can download our first alert weather app so you can stay on top of the weather regardless of where you are. It's free to download. He didn't bother nobody. So we, it's, it's taking a toll on us, really taking a toll on us. Family is mourning the loss of their loved one after he was shot and killed outside of his home in Camp Washington. The family says Nick Reese had already been fighting for his life with long term kidney disease. Courtney King has the story you'll only see right here on Fox 19 now. We're here at Cincinnati Police's criminal investigation section because detectives are on Nick's case. We spoke with his sister, Alyssa, and she tells us that he was a grandfather and a father of six. And she says that he was always present with the family, even though he had weekly dialysis appointments. We're not doing good, like we're doing terrible, actually, trying to figure this out. Elisa Reese and her family are heartbroken after her brother, Nick Reese, was shot and killed Wednesday in front of his home on Coleraine Avenue in Camp Washington. Another man was shot and taken to the hospital. Elisa says she saw Nick shortly before the shooting. We in the shock mode because I just had left there. I wasn't even gone an hour before I got a call to come back. Officers say EMS attempted life-saving measures on Nick but weren't successful. Elisa says her brother was an innocent bystander. He was fine when I left, like he was outside riding on his little motorbike. You know, minding his business. She says Nick had battled kidney disease for decades and went to dialysis three times a week. He's uh, had um, kidney failure since he was 14. So he had been on dialysis his whole life, you know. You know, got his toes, fingers cut off, but still, you know, going through life. Despite his medical hardships, Nick was a father of six and even had a grandchild. Elisa says he was always present in their big family. He was full of life. He, he didn't miss a beat with anything that went on, everything that went on, anything that anybody had. He made it. He made his appearance. He was there. Police have not announced any arrests yet, but Elisa asks anyone with information to please come forward. We got to have justice. We got to have justice. And we're going to do everything we can to help the police figure this out. Right now, we don't know the condition of the victim in the hospital, but we will update you as soon as we do. If you have any information into the shooting death of Nick Reese, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 513-352-3040. From CPD with photographer Jared Darwish, Courtney King, Fox 19 Now. Courtney, thank you. A shooting at Bramble Park in Madisonville on Saturday sent five people to the hospital. And tonight, Cincinnati Police are updating Madisonville residents about the search for the suspected shooters. Chancellor Wynn joins us live in Madisonville with a closer look at the investigation. So we are live here at the Madisonville Recreation Center because during tonight's community council meeting, Cincinnati police officers spent quite a bit of time speaking with residents, asking them for more details about the shooting at Bramble Park. And officers are hoping that with more information, that could lead to an arrest. Unfortunately, I have received zero tips from Crime Stoppers. That is the Cincinnati Police's lead investigator who's looking into the shooting that happened Saturday evening at Bramble Park in Madisonville. The shooting sent five people to the hospital, one of them critically injured. Right now we know a lot, but it, there is not enough information right now or uh, evidence to actually sign charges on, on any individual that was involved in the shooting. CPD says they believe the shooting stems from an ongoing disagreement between two people. They also say that more than one person fired shots Saturday night. We don't have an exact number on that. We are working to develop evidence through the shell casings. I believe this was targeted. Um, we believe they knew each other, the individuals involved that were the main instigators of this event. Um, and we're working to identify exactly what role each person had. A few hours after the Bramble Park shooting, CPD says more shots were fired in the parking lot of the Madisonville Recreation Center. I was going to ask if we know those were related instances, if the, if the cut moved from Bramble up here to the rec center. It will take time to make that determination. Um, 
it's certainly possible, but we don't know yet. And that's where the help from the community comes into play. CPD says more than 300 people were at Bramble Park at the time of the shooting, and now police need witnesses to come forward with details that could lead to an arrest. People don't have to identify themselves. They can remain anonymous and still contribute to giving information. If, you know, certainly the offenders understand that, you're not above getting caught. Um, I think that that would be the message of we're not going to stand for it.